Zhang Organs, Heart 2. Systematic Relations of the Heart. The heart is related to the vessels in body constituent and shines in the face. The vessels are governed by the heart because the vessels are connected with the heart all throughout the body. The heart is related to the vessels in body constituent. The most adorned tissue by the heart is the face, which means that the normality of the function of the heart may be reflected by the color of the face or the changes of the complexion to show whether the heart functions well. When the heart cheese vigorous, blood in the vessels is enough and the complexion will be ruddy and lustrous. If heart blood is deficient, complexion will be sallow. If the blood is stagnated, the complexion will be bluish purple. The heart opens into the tongue. The function of the tongue is to taste and speak. If the heart functions well, tongue will be red and bright, taste quickly and speak fluently. If heart does not function well, taste will change and tongue rigidity and delirium occur. Hence, the tongue can reflect physiological and pathological conditions of the heart. For example, if heart yang is deficient, tongue will be pale, white, tender, soft, or enlarged. If heart yin is deficient, tongue will be crimson and thin. If heart fire is flaming upward, tongue will be red and apta may occur. When there is a stagnation of the heart blood, the tongue will be a dark purple or with a petechiae and ecchymosis. When the heart does not function normally in governing mental activities, tongue rigidity, delirium, or aphasia may occur. The heart corresponds to joy and emotion. The function of the heart is related to joy and emotion. Generally speaking, joy is a reaction to an optimal stimulation from outside information is beneficial to health, but overjoy may lead to a heart disorder, making the heart chi sluggish and the mind unable to concentrate. Sweat is a fluid of the heart. The heart is related to sweat. When a person is nervous or scared, spontaneous sweating occurs because the heart is cardinal lord of five zhang organs and six fu organs and governs mental activities. Sweating caused by spirit is related to heart. Hence, sweat is named as... Thank you for your attention. Interviewing for pain in the ribs, feeling of oppression in the chest. Pain in the ribs refers to pain on the lateral aspect of the rib cage above the hypochondrial area. The most common patterns causing pain in the ribs are liver chi stagnation. There is pain in the ribs with pronounced feeling of distension. Blood stasis, severe stabbing pain, damp pit in liver and gallbladder, pain in the ribs with a feeling of oppression and heaviness. A feeling of oppression of the chest is a translation of the Chinese term xiong men. Western patients, at least in Anglo-Saxon countries, would seldom use this term and report this symptom as a feeling of tightness, discomfort in the chest, or a sensation of having a weight on the chest. A feeling of oppression of the chest, accompanied by a cough and expectoration of phlegm, indicates retention of phlegm in the lungs, which is the most common cause of this symptom. A feeling of oppression of the chest without a cough and without expectoration of phlegm and accompanied by slight breathlessness, sighing, and a feeling of lump in the throat indicates stagnation of lung chi with lung chi failing to descend. This is usually caused by emotional problems such as sadness or worry. Although a feeling of a lump in the throat is usually related to liver chi stagnation, stagnation of lung chi caused by emotional problems is a very frequent cause of this symptom together with the feeling of oppression of the chest. Another very common cause of a feeling of oppression of the chest is rebellious chi of the penetrating vessel and is more common in women. However, before diagnosing rebellious chi of the penetrating vessel, we should check whether the feeling of oppression of the chest is accompanied by other relevant symptoms such as abdominal distension or fullness, 
pain or fullness around the umbilicus or epigastric tightness. In a few cases, a severe stagnation of liver chi from emotional problems also may cause a feeling of oppression of the chest. So let's summarize what we have taken up. For phlegm in the lungs, the cause, uh, the if the accompanying symptoms would be slight breathlessness and sighing. So aside from feeling of oppression of the chest in lung chi stagnation, there would be sighing, feeling of lump in the throat. For rebellious chi of the penetrating vessel, you need to have abdominal fullness and epigastric fullness. And for severe liver chi stagnation, there will be depression and irritability. Thank you for your attention. Let's proceed to diagnosis according to pathogenic chi and continue our discussion on phlegm. A person with a lot of phlegm will have difficulty concentrating. There is a difference in how a difficulty in concentrating manifests itself in various imbalance patterns. When there is heat, the person will find it hard to concentrate because they are mentally and physically very restless. New thoughts and ideas will constantly arise, which makes it hard for them to remain focused. When there is heart blood deficiency and spleen chi deficiency, shen will lack nourishment, resulting in the mind feeling empty. When they read something, they cannot remember what they have just read. When there is phlegm, it is hard to concentrate because the head feels as if it is full of cotton wool and the thoughts are very blurred. It is difficult to think clearly. Again, this can be recognized from when you, had, you have had a heavy cold or bad hangover. Due to its obstructive nature, phlegm can also be a cause of dizziness. The difference between dizziness in a deficiency condition and phlegm is that when there is phlegm, there will also be a heavy sensation in the head and possibly even nausea. Moreover, the dizziness can arise completely at random and it often feels as if the room is spinning around. The dizziness will often feel worse when the person is lying down or lying down will not ameliorate the condition. Physically, phlegm can be seen in a person's skin and the flesh below, which appears though like and lacks tone. This can sometimes be seen in the face. The skin, the skin will be facey. There may be lack of luster to the skin, and the skin and the hair can also be greasy or oily. There can be a tendency to be slightly overweight or even obese. The person may be stocky or portly without being muscular. There can also be excessive growth of body hair. This will especially be noticeable in women. The fingers of a person with chronic phlegm may be a little too thick and appear to be slightly chubby. Phlegm, because it blocks the movement of blood, can manifest with a dark, sooty color around the eyes. A person with phlegm can sometimes have a special odor. The odor is difficult to describe precisely, but it is easily recognizable when it has been smelled a couple of times. The smell is heavy and lingers in the air a long time after the person has left the room. It can sometimes smell a bit like a wet leather jacket. The saliva around the mouth will be thicker and stickier. The person can have a sticky taste or sensation in the mouth. Phlegm can also manifest with a gravelly voice or the person can be slightly nasal. There can be a need to clear the throat a lot. The tongue can be swollen or slightly limp and can have an oily or sticky coating. The pulse is usually wiry or slippery. Symptoms and signs that are triggered or provoked by perfume, petrol, or solvents will be due to phlegm dampness. This is because phlegm has a heavy and greasy nature. The above substances dissolve and they use things that are oily and they will dissolve and they get phlegm in the body. This will result in phlegm that was previously stagnant and embedded in the body's tissues being set in motion and circulating around the body. Although this digests the phlegm, it still has a disrupting and obstructive effect. Phlegm dampness can also be provoked by scents and others, 
that are heavy, such as certain perfumes and flowers like hyacinths and lilies. Phlegm dampness symptoms are often provoked by weather fronts, especially when there is low pressure, sandy weather, and very humid weather. Symptoms that are triggered or exacerbated by consuming phlegm or damp producing food and drinks will, of course, indicate that there is phlegm. Looking through the symptoms and signs can give the, the impression that most of us have phlegm. This is not far from the tr truth. Both the climate and diet in Northern Europe mean that they, there can be a tendency to develop phlegm dampness, but phlegm is also something that accumulates throughout life and is often a consequence of most chronic patterns of imbalance. Therefore, the older you get, the more phlegm you will probably have in your body. Phlegm often arises when heat thickens and condenses body fluids. When steam chi deficiency creates dampness, when there is stagnation of chi or blood resulting in stagnation of the body fluids, or when there is lack of the yang to transport and transform fluids. Phlegm can also be a consequence of the diet that a person consumes. This could be food that we can esteem, create dampness or heat, or have a phlegm producing dynamic. Thank you for your attention. Let's discuss diagnosis according to the four levels. Way level, wind heat. In this diagnostic approach, the patterns are di differentiated in relation to four energetic levels rather than the six channels. The deeper the level, the more severe the condition. This diagnostic analysis for the first time introduced the concept that exogenous pathogenic qi and thereby disease can be transmitted from person to person and that exogenous pathogenic qi can invade the body via the mouth the nose, and the genitals. In this analysis, the exogenous pathogenic cheese energetically hot from the very beginning, hence the term when being or heat diseases. In heat diseases, the symptoms will reflect the presence of heat and the yin aspect of the body will be rapidly injured. Because heat is a young form of pathogenic qi, it is very dynamic and the symptoms speak picture can rapidly change. A person can go, go from being healthy to seriously ill in a very short period of time. The pathogen's young nature can also be seen in the fact that even strong and healthy people can become ill after being in contact with exogenous pathogenic heat. Many highly contagious diseases and epidemics such as the bubonic plague, Ebola, influenza, measles, and so on are examples of when being or heat diseases. When being theories differentiate not only between four energetic levels, Wei, Qi, Ying, and blood, but also between different types of heat, for example, wind heat or damp heat in the Wei level and lung heat or stomach heat in the Qi level. Diagnostic according to four levels determine the following. The disease, first the disease location, if the pathogenic chi is in the interior or exterior in relation to the eight principles and how deep an aspect of the interior it is that is affected. What the, the nature of the disorder is, whether it is deficient or excess, when sheng chi is strong, the condition will be defined as being excess. In general, when exogenous pathogenic qi is in the way or qi level, it is an excess condition. When the yin or blood level are affected, it is usually a deficient condition. In contrast to the six stages, all the patterns of imbalance are heat imbalances. About how the disease develops, disease develop is a dynamic process that is constantly changing, especially in the beginning. As with the sticks, Stages, this diagnosis model is used to assess the relative strength of Seng Chi and exogenous pathogenic Chi in relation to each other. It can also be used to gauge the direction in which the disease is moving. 
If the disease is penetrating downwards, it is a negative sign. If, on the other hand, the symptoms change from one of the deeper levels to symptoms of one of the more superficial level, it is a positive sign. The treatment principle, the nature of disorder, determines how it should be treated. If there is heat in the way level, it must be expelled outwards. If it is deeper down, it must be drained. If there is deficient condition, that which is deficient uh, needs to be supported and so on. Way level. It is the most superficial level and is very similar to the dying stage of the six stages. It is the first level that is attacked by an infectious disease. Many of the symptoms and signs are indication that Wei Qi has been disrupted in its function and activities. Many of the symptoms and signs are the same as those seen in the Taiyan stage. But in this level, there is heat, and this means that there are also differences in the symptom picture. Differentiation is made between invasion of different types of pathogenic heat, wind heat, damp heat, dry heat, and summer heat. Wind heat is the most common and most important differentiation, especially for acupuncturists. Next is the wind heat. At first glance, wind heat appears to be very similar to an invasion of wind cold in the tying stage of the six stages. But when there is wind heat, there is less aversion to cold. Even though there is less aversion to cold, there is still an aversion to wind and cold. This is because the invading pathogenic chi blocks the circulation of the warming wei chi. The disruption of wei chi can also be seen in the fact that there is often little or no sweating. There can also be a headache, but there, but where the headache in the tying stage was tight in nature, the headache seen in wind heat imbalances is more pounding or throbbing. This is due to the expansive dynamic that heat has. Heat will cause the person to have a fever or feel feverish without necessarily having an elevated body temperature. The heat will often be palpable on the person's forehead, which will feel warm to touch. Heat will damage the fluid and make the person thirsty. Their pulse will be rapid. Wind heat can disrupt the functioning of the lungs, resulting in a cough or sore throat. For the etiology, contacts with exogenous pathogenic heat. For the symptoms and signs, there is acute fever with mild aversion to wind and cold, no or little sweating, throbbing headache, thirst, sore throat, red swollen throat, cough, irritability, restlessness, yellowish or dried mucus in the nose, forehead may feel warm when touched, the tip of the tongue may be red and there may be a thin yellowish coating on the front of the tongue, rapid and superficial pulse. The key symptoms, fever and aversion to cold, rapid and superficial pulse. For the treatment principle, uh, we have to expel wind heat, activate wind chi. For the acupuncture points, we have to choose from do 14, LI4, LI11, lung 7, lung 10, lung 11, UB12, UB13, and GB20. Needle technique is draining, cupping is recommended. For the explanation, do 14 activates Wei Qi and drains heat. Ally 4, Ally 11, Lung 7, UV 12, and UV 13 expel wind and heat. Lung 10 and Lung 11 drain heat from the lung and throat. GB 20 expels wind and drains young from the head. Relevant advice when there is an invasion of wind heat, it is best not to eat or to only eat light food. The person should drink tea that is both cooling and spicy. For example, for example, elderflower, chrysanthemum, or mint tea. An invasion of wind heat can be caused by the following pattern of imbalance. Uh, I mean, no previous pattern. An invasion of wind heat can result in the following pattern of imbalance, like qi level heat, yin level heat. 
Thank you for your attention. Organ problems, combining distal with local points. In interior organ problems, the method of combining distal with local points is always used. One cannot treat the inter internal organs without using distal points, and the local points are often not necessary except in chronic conditions. Of course, countless examples could be given of the use of distal points to treat internal organ diseases, such as liver 3 to treat liver diseases and stomach 36 to treat stomach diseases and so on. In chronic conditions of the internal organs, it is essential to use local points in combination with distal ones. The local points used are mainly the back transporting points and front collecting points for the relevant internal organs. For example, in chronic deficiency of spleen chi, it would be essential to use bladder 20 or REN12 in chronic conditions of the lungs, like lung 1 or and or bladder 13, etc. When treating chronic headaches, some local points on the head are added to the point prescription to treat the man manifestation while the distal points treat the root. For example, in a chronic case of headaches due to deficiency of kidney yin with rising of liver yang, one can use kidney 3, spleen 6, gallbladder 43, and liver 3 to treat the root. Sample tonify kidney yin and subdue liver yang. To treat the manifestation, it would be necessary to add local points according to, to the channel involved, such as gallbladder 9, gallbladder 6 for the gallbladder channel, or bladder 7 for the bladder channel. Assuming the headaches occur always on the left side, one would use kidney 3 and spleen 6 bilateral, liver 3 on the right and gallbladder 43 on the left, to treat the gallbladder channel on the left side and the local points also on the left side. Point combination for headaches from liver yang rising and kidney yin deficiency. There's gallbladder 6, gallbladder 9, spleen 6, liver 3, kidney 3, and gallbladder 43. The use of local points on the head is important to remove the local stagnation of qi or blood in the head, which results from chronic headaches, especially if they always occur on the same spot. Thank you for your attention. Diagnosis according to the Zhangfu organ patterns. Damp heat in the stomach. This pattern is very similar to damp heat in the spleen, and the two patterns are often closely related to each other. The difference between them is that when there is damp heat in the stomach, there will be signs that stomach chi is disrupted or that there is heat in the stomach channel. Etiology. Invasions by exogenous damp heat, such as the ingestion of spoiled or infected food, living or working in warm and humid conditions, and contact with viruses, bacteria, fungi, and so on that have a damp heat dynamic. Excessive consumptions of food that generate damp heat, such as fried foods and alcohol. Damp heat can often arise as a consequence of chronic spleen chi shu and damp conditions. Symptoms and signs, heaviness and pain in the abdomen, nausea, vomiting, thirst with no desire to drink, sticky sensation in the mouth, heaviness in the arms and legs, sinusitis, jaw pain, nasal congestion, yellowish sticky mucus in the nose and sinuses, yellowish complexion, yellow sclera, pimples, spots or sores around the mouth, on the forehead or on the cheeks, which are red with yellowish pus, dark yellow urine, yellow greasy tongue coating. The tongue may be red in the middle, fast and slippery pulse. Key symptoms, discomfort or pain in the abdomen, heaviness, yellow greasy tongue coating. The treatment principle, drain dampness and heat, regulate stomach chi. The acupuncture, acupuncture points we choose from stomach 21, Stomach 34, stomach 40, 44, 
um, Li11, spin 6, spin 9, REN 9, and REN 13. Needle technique, draining, and no moxa. Explanation, stomach 21, 34, and REN 13 regulate stomach chi. Stomach 44 and Li11 drain damp heat. Spleen 6, 9, and REN 9 drain dampness. Relevant advice. It is critical that a person with chronic damp heat in the stomach avoid foods and beverages that create heat, dampness, or damp heat. Ideally, alcohol, fried foods, chocolate, hot spices such as chili, dairy products, sugar and sweets should be avoided completely. The person, the person should also consume a diet that tonifies the spleen, which often is the root cause of the damp. Damp heat in the stomach can be caused by the following pattern imbalances. Spleen chi shu, spleen yang shu, damp cold invading the spleen, and stomach fire. Damp heat in the stomach can result in the following patterns of imbalance. Spleen chi shu, phlegm, phlegm fire. So damp heat invading the stomach, etiology, exposure to exterior damp heat, underlying accompanying patho pathology, spleen chi deficiency, accumulation of dampness, retention of food in the stomach, stomach heat, damp heat in the spleen, signs and symptoms, epigastric fullness and pain, feeling of heaviness, facial pain, blocked nose with thick sticky nasal discharge, Thirst with no desire to drink. Nausea. Feeling of heat. Dull yellow complexions. A sticky taste. Pulse. Slippery and rapid. The tongue will be red with sticky yellow coat. Treatment principles. Clear heat and transform damp. Supplement stomach. Disinhibit water passages. For acupuncture treatment. Stomach 44. Stomach 34, stomach 21, REN 13, LI 11, REN 12, LI 4, REN 11, stomach, stomach 40, spleen 9, REN 9, needle, REN 9 with drainage. Thank you for your attention. Diagnosis according to Qi Shui Jinye imbalances, rebellious Qi. In this pattern, there are symptoms and signs indicating that an organ's chi is moving in the wrong direction. It is always necessary to differentiate which organ is involved. Chi can become rebellious when it is forced to move in the wrong direction, usually upwards by heat. It is prevented from moving in the right direction, usually because it is blocked by pathogenic chi. An organ is too weak to send its chi in the right direction a chi deficiency condition. This will mainly depend on which organ is involved with regards to etiology. It will often be due to invasions of exogenous pathogenic chi, consuming too much or the wrong foods, of the wrong foods or emotional imbalances. Heat, chi stagnations, and chi deficiency conditions are often involved. Symptoms and signs. When there is rebellious lung chi, there will be coughing, sneezing, tightness of the chest, shortness of breath. When there is rebellious stomach chi, belching, reflux, and acid regurgitation, nausea, vomiting, hiccups. When there is rebellious spleen chi, there will be diarrhea, organ prolapse, dragging, or sinking sensation. When there is rebellious liver chi, headache, dizziness, nausea, abdominal bloating, alternating diarrhea, and constipation. Treatment principle, regulate qi. If there is rebellious lung qi, we can use the following points. Bladder 13, REN 22, REN 17, lung 1, and lung 7. If there is rebellious stomach qi, REN 13, stomach 21, stomach 34, stomach 36, and pericardium 6. If there is rebellious spleen qi, spleen 3, stomach 36, REN 6, and do 20. If there is rebellious liver chi, Li4, liver 2, liver 3, liver 14, GB20, GB34, and GB43. Needle technique would be draining or sedation, with the exception of the points for rebellious spleen chi, which should be tonified and heated with moxa. Bladder 13, REN22, REN17, lung 1, and lung 7 
regulate lung qi. REN13, stomach 21, stomach 34, stomach 36, and pericardium 6 regulate stomach qi. Spleen 3, stomach 36, and REN6 tonify and lift spleen qi. DU20 lifts the qi. LI4, liver 3, liver 14, and GB34 regulate liver qi. Liver 2, GB20, and GB43 drain liver yang. Relevant advice, this will depend on which organs are affected and the relevant etiology. Rebellious qi can be caused by invasions of pathogenic qi, qi stagnation, qi deficiency, blood stagnation, phlegm, food stagnation, heat, cold, yang deficiency, yin deficiency. Thank you for your attention. Let's continue to study the Russian with another case history. For our case history now, um, we have a 38-year-old woman who had been suffering from depression for several years. According to her, this did not seem to have any obvious cause as she was, in her words, happily married and had no financial or work problems. She initially did not come complaining of depression, but she sought treatment for chillblains, very cold hands, blue lips, and tiredness. She felt very cold all the time. On interrogation, it transpired that she also suffered from dizziness, lower back ache, frequent urination, and nocturia. Her tongue was pale and swollen in the front part or the lung area. Her pulse was weak in general and especially in both rear positions, but very slightly wiry on the left. Her diagnosis, judging by her pulse, her condition is clearly primarily empty. There is a clear deficiency of kidney yang, as evidenced by the feeling of cold, cold limbs, tiredness, dizziness, back ache, frequent urination, nocturia, pale tongue, and pulse weak on both rear positions. However, there are two full conditions on which she had no symptoms. First, there is some phlegm. This is shown by the swelling on the front of the tongue. Second, there is some qi stagnation, and this is shown by the slightly wiry quality of the pulse on the left side. Therefore, the feeling of depression in her case has two causes. One empty, the other full, with a predominance, predominance of the first. The deficiency of the kidney yang fails to stimulate the coming and going of the ethereal soul, resulting in depression. On the other hand, this deficiency also implies a weakness of the kidney's growth power and therefore a drive, determination, and initiative, and this contributed to her feeling of depression. Thank you for your attention.